today I'm making a recipe recreation. That's where I go out to a restaurant to eat and I have something that is absolutely delicious and I wanna bring it to you so that you guys can make it at home and I can make it at home as well. So today what I'm doing is I'm making a creamy pesto pasta served with some spinach in there, some uh, sweet peas and some caramelized onions. And over that is gonna be some chicken breast that we're gonna grill up on the stove. And I'm telling you, it's out of this world. I'm Rockin' Robin, and I'm gonna show you how to make it right after my chef joke. Okay, so here we go with our chef joke. Why couldn't the Italian pasta get into his house? Because he had gnocchi. <laughs> so I'm gonna start off here by cooking my caramelized onions because they're gonna take about 45 minutes to cook. And you could always cook these up a day ahead of time, even two days ahead of time, and that way they're always ready for you when you need them. And I like to make more of these than I think I need just because they're so good on everything. I mean, you can put these in sandwiches and put them in your salad, and I mean anything, literally. So just cut your onion in half and then go ahead and peel off the outer part and then we're just gonna slice these up on the relatively thinner side. So I've got a large frying pan here. I'm gonna put some olive oil in here and we'll just I'm just gonna lay that right into a cold pan and we're gonna put this on the stove and cook this medium low for as long as we can to get these onions to caramelize and you want to stir the onions frequently so that they caramelize slowly and don't burn and I'm gonna add a little bit of salt to this while the onions are slowly cooking, I'm gonna place a pot of water on the stove and get it hot for my noodles. Now you wanna add a pinch of salt to the water and then I'm gonna place a lid on it and just keep this at a simmer so it's ready to go. So while our onions are cooking slowly, we're gonna work on cutting up our chicken breast. I have a pretty thick chicken breast here, so what I wanna do is butterfly it, cut it in half horizontally so that it will cook up much quicker. I have two nice pieces here, and if need be, we can always pound these thinner to make them more even, but I'm just gonna go with this. We'll season these up both sides with salt, garlic powder, and some poultry seasoning. Now don't forget to head on back over to those onions and give them a stir every once in a while. Now towards the end of cooking these onions, I found that I need to turn the temperature down. You don't want them to burn. Now once they get this beautiful color, you know they're just about done. And that took about 45 minutes. Now to these onions, I'm adding some organic baby spinach. I got mine from Trader Joe's. And I used about a bowl full here. So, you know, use as much as you like. So I'm gonna add this to the onions and just let them wilt a little bit. So I'm gonna toss them and let the olive oil get mixed into them and they will cook down quite a bit. And once these have cooked down, as you can see here, how much they have cooked down, uh, I'm gonna place them in a bowl and just let them stay warm here until we're ready to serve them up. I'm gonna use the same pan that we used to cook the onions and the spinach, and I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil to the pan and let it heat up. And then we'll lay our chicken breast right in the pan and don't touch it. Now we're gonna cook these for about four or five minutes on the first side until you notice that the chicken is changing color going up halfway on the side of the breast. Okay, I'm gonna flip this one over. Check out that nice golden brown crust. Now this second piece is a little thicker so it's gonna take a little longer but I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over. You can see it looks beautiful. And I'm even gonna put a lid on this so that I can get it to cook a little faster on the inside. After another four or five minutes, we'll take the lid off and check the internal temperature. We're looking for 165 degrees Fahrenheit. The thinner piece is done, so I'm gonna pull that off and place it on a plate and cover it with a little foil to keep it warm. That second piece needs another minute or two to cook, and then we'll place that in the plate to join the other one, and we'll keep that warm. It is now that time to start cooking our pasta. So I'm using gluten-free pasta here. I'm using bonza pasta here that is gluten-free, made from chickpeas. But you can use regular pasta or any other gluten-free pasta. And I actually feel like a penne pasta would work better for this recipe, but the spaghetti version is all I had at the time. 
Now it's time to work on our creamy basil sauce. This is the best part as far as I'm concerned. So I went out to my garden and I cut off some fresh leaves and then picked the leaves from the stems till I had about two cups. It's kind of hard to tell how much is two cups really because you can pack it tightly or you can pack it lightly. So I went ahead and filled up my two cup measuring cup here and then I decided to weigh it, what I felt was the correct amount. And I came out to uh, 60 grams. So if you want to measure it out, you can. If you want to get your hands on one of these folding scales, I'll leave a link in the description for you. I really love how compact it is. Place your basil into a large bowl of cold water and give it a few swishes. That way you can rinse out any bugs that might be in there. Drain the basil into a colander of some sort. Here I'm using my salad spinner colander. And you really want to get this basil nice and dry because you don't want to add water to your sauce. And I have found that a salad spinner does a terrific job, so give that a go. I spun it about three different times and really got most all the water right out of it. Look at how nice and dry that is, and that's what you want. So the first thing we're going to do is add the basil leaves to our food processor. Next is some raw pine nuts. You can toast them or not. It really doesn't matter too much. Raw garlic is next and you can use, you know, more than one clove. I only used one clove here because it has a little bit of a bite to it. So cut off the end and peel the garlic and then I like to chop it up a little bit just so I make sure that it is really small so there's no big chunks. So I'm going to blend this now just to give the garlic and the pine nuts a chance to really get broken down. So here you can see that the pine nuts and the garlic are still a little bit large and that's why we want to pre-mix it a little bit before we add the rest of the ingredients. Now next we got to add some cheese to our sauce. Now you can use fresh like I'm doing here or you can use the grated but I think the fresh is better. And we're going to use about a third of a cup packed of the Parmesan cheese. And you can get the written recipe below the video. Click down there where it says show more. And there's our Parmesan cheese. So to keep our basil sauce from oxidizing and turning brown, I'm gonna add a little bit of lemon juice to this. About a teaspoon, uh, maybe two teaspoons. We'll add a pinch of salt. Remember that cheese has salt in it and then we'll blend away. Now the last thing we're going to add is a drizzle of some extra virgin olive oil and we're going to be adding at least a quarter of a cup just depending on how thick it gets. And make sure to scrape down the sides of the food processor every once in a while just to make sure everything's well mixed. Let's take this over to the stove and place it in that frying pan and heat it up. To make our pesto sauce nice and creamy I'm adding some organic heavy whipping cream to the sauce about a half a cup. Feel free to add more, but remember you're going to be diluting the basil sauce. Next goes in some sweet peas that are frozen and you just want to heat these up so they should heat up in just a few minutes. Once this sauce is hot, we're ready to plate it up. So just before we serve this up, we're gonna slice our chicken nice and thin into bite-sized pieces. So let's serve up that creamy pesto pasta with the sweet peas in there first. Next comes those caramelized onions with the spinach. And I'm telling you, these really make the dish. Do not leave these out. Here comes that tender, delicious chicken. And I like to finish it off with some freshly grated Parmesan cheese. Okay, here comes that taste test that I have been waiting for.
This is so good and savory. You are absolutely going to love it. I beg you to try it. The caramelized onions are where it's at. Give it a go. Want a dessert to go along with our delicious pasta dish? Well, try my key lime pie. It's light, tangy, and delicious. Click the link on the screen and it'll take you right to the recipe and you can try it out. All right, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, you can show me by smashing the like button and sharing the video with someone you think might enjoy it. All right, so we'll see you back here next week for another rockin' recipe.